What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that I really like for adding materials to my models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so depending on when you watch this, um, you may still be able to get material like on sale. I think that's through the end of the day tomorrow. If you can't or don't see this by then, it's still a great value even if it's not on sale. No, I will link to all add-ons that I talk about in this video in the notes down below. Those are affiliate links, meaning I do receive a commission if you do end up purchasing through those links. And so really when you're looking at material add-ons, at least in my opinion, you've really kind of got two options. So the first is, and this is not what Materialic is, the first is procedural materials, right? So procedural materials are basically materials that are set up that use nodes in Blender in order to generate materials. So they're really cool because they're adjustable, um, meaning you can come in here and you can make different changes and other things like that, right? So they're set up where, uh, where is it? Um, down below there should be, here it is. So you, you've got the ability to make some adjustments in here, adding things things like cracks and other things like that. The thing with the procedural materials, those are very heavy and they really can kind of like slow down your computer. They're definitely great. Um, I love Sanctus Library um, because of the amount of stuff that's in here. There's other procedural material libraries out there as well, but the problem with them is they are a little bit heavy on your computer, especially if you don't have a very fast machine. So the other kind of material add-ons are gonna be add-ons that are more PBR based, meaning they're gonna use more uh, material maps in order to generate effects. You can still adjust them, but not in the same way as the procedural materials, which I actually think is a good thing because it means they have better performance. And so in this case, Materialic is one of those add-ons. I use this add-on a lot for adding materials in my model. It has not only a great material library, um, and what I like about it is it has multiple different kinds of materials, right? It's not just like one thing. It's a bunch of different things contained in a collection, but it's also got tools for setting up things Things like displacement, which we'll take a look at in a minute. So anyway, Materialic is a tool for adding materials inside of your model. And um, there's a few different options that you can get with this tool, right? You can get the starter pack, which is gonna be super cheap. Um, and it's gonna have a few materials in here and some HDRI images as well as the tools. And then you've got other options to get like the full library up to 8K resolution, depending on the resolution of the materials that you need. So if you don't need super high resolution materials, you can get the less expensive version right here. So one of the things that's happened with the polygonic guys is they've basically transitioned over to these add-ons, right? Botanic, material like traffic. Um, these are all now asset collections that you can bring into Blender. And then you use a tool called Ingon, which is a free add-on that they have um, in order to control your different materials, right? It's got its own asset browser. It's got some other things in here as well. But basically what that means is that means that you're going to need to download the asset pack files as well as the Ingon browser and install that in Blender. But let's jump over and take a look at some of the tools that are contained inside of this. And so we're gonna use this Italian flat model from Flavio della Tomasa that you can download from the Blender demo files page in order to kind of take a look at the way that this works. So if we jump over into Blender, what you're gonna to wanna to do is first off, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you install Ingon. So Ingon is available for free through the Blender market. And then you wanna make sure that you install and enable that. So I'm gonna look for Ingon right here. And then within Ingon, this is gonna give you the ability to install the asset packs. So this is basically going to take the Materialic asset pack file and it's going to install it inside of Blender. And then once you do that, what that's gonna do is that's also gonna set it up um, with your asset packs so that you can access them from within the asset browser. So first install Ingon, then go through and install the asset packs for Materialic. Once you do that, what's gonna happen is those materials are all going to show up in your Blender asset browser down below. So you can go to the asset browser, then you wanna select the option for Materialic Full right here or whatever version you have in order to bring those in. Now, one thing to note is Ingon does have its own asset browser. So, and I'm gonna drag a new window in here real quick, um, but you can click on this and then you can set a window to show the asset browser. You can click in here and you can also filter and look at all of these materials using their asset browser. So the plus to this is within their asset browser, you basically have the ability to do more filtering and other things like that. Um, but in general, I find myself using the Blender 
asset browser. So we're gonna close out of this. We're gonna close this window and go back into this view. So what I like about the material like materials is they're very simple, right? So let's say we wanted to add a wood floor to our floor. So notice how if I click over into the wood section right here, there's a number of different woods. I can just click and drag this into my scene like this, right? Super easy, don't have to do a whole lot of work, anything like that. And that material is going to be all set up. And so say I was to look at the nodes for this tool, right? So we're gonna go into the shader editor right here and I want the node that's in here. Notice how this is all set up already um, with all of the different mapping, the other things like that. And this is actually a pretty complex setup. Well, the cool thing is within InGon, if you scroll down into the material like setting, notice how there's actually options in here to adjust things about that material. So like for example, I can adjust the mapping of that material and the size just by using this slider right here. So there's a slider in here to adjust the size. There's also a slider in here to adjust things like the rotation of the object, right? So I can rotate this like 90 degrees, um, do whatever I want there. You can also set if this is mapped using the UV mapping, the world mapping, um, or the object mapping. Um, and so this makes working with materials really easy. So let's say for example, on this wall, I wanted a brick material. So I'm gonna jump back into my asset browser. Well, there's a number of different wall surfaces, as well as brick and stone materials. So say that I wanted to bring in like a plaster, I could click and drag that onto this wall right here. It's gonna take a second to compile that shader, but then that material is gonna show up in here. And again, I can adjust things like the scale. Whoops, I wanna make sure that I actually have that object selected, but I can adjust things like the scale of that texture really easily. But then say that we wanted to add something like a brick over here. Well, I can click and drag a brick material. And these are all contained inside of this asset library. So they're really fast to bring in here, right? So I can bring these in, I can make adjustments to them um, using this tool. And so one of the cool things about this tool is you can also use this to quickly add things like displacement. Now, one thing I will say is you wanna be a little bit careful with this, like the way that this model is set up, for example, um, if I just try to add the displacement right now, uh, it does a bunch of funky stuff and your model might crash. Um, so what I wanna do instead is I just wanna take this geometry and I just wanna separate it into its own geometry just to be safe. And I'm gonna save before I do this as well but I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and I just wanna pick up the faces associated with this wall right here, just so you can kind of see what we're doing. And you do kind of wanna think about this kind of thing ahead of time when you're modeling. I mean, obviously this is just an example model, but what I wanna do is I wanna separate the selection into its own mesh, right? So now this is kind of its own thing in here, but what we can do is there are tools in here to set up displacement. So. What I can do is I can take this, I can click on add displacement and it's got a couple different options, right? I can add a subdivision surface modifier, which is gonna subdivide this so that it has enough supporting geometry to be displaced. Um, but you can also, you could set this up with an actual displacement modifier if you wanted to. But in this case, we're just going to add the subsurf and the adaptive subdivision. And so when we do that, if we jump over into rendered mode, right? So I'm just gonna render this right here, what's gonna happen is notice how this brick wall, and there's a little bit of funkiness going on with the geometry over here, don't worry about that too much. Um, but notice how we can scroll in here and we can adjust things like the height of that displacement. And obviously we'd wanna keep this kind of small still, but this is basically automatically setting up our displacement for us, um, which is a huge time saver because otherwise you have to kind of like screw around with that yourself, which is not my favorite thing in the world to do. And again, we've got some geometry overlapping over here. Don't worry too much about that for this example. But um, I mean, that's what I really like about this tool is it just makes this whole thing really easy. And so one other thing I like about this, and we're just gonna pick a simple plane and just move it over here, just so you can kind of see, is within this tool, and let's pick up something like maybe a stone or a ground material. So a ground material would probably be good. But if I drop this onto this material right here, we talked about the displacement. Well, notice how there's an option in here to add the displacement modifier in here. So if I add the displacement modifier in here, and I think this needs to be UV mapped, so I'm just going to right click, and we're just gonna do a simple cube projection. Um, but and so you don't always wanna do this, obviously, because you need a bunch of supporting geometry in here for it to really work. Um, but notice what this is gonna do. 
and I'm gonna subdivide the whole thing just so it has a little more geometry to work with. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna actually add a displace modifier in here and we want this to be fairly minor and I could add some additional subdivision, but what that's gonna do is that's actually going to displace the geometry in the 3D space in order to make something look actually bumpy. So if you do wanna displace the actual geometry in here, there is definitely a tool that you can use in order to do that. And so you'd obviously have to play around with it a little bit, but you can use this in order to create that more complex geometry inside of your scenes as actual displaced geometry. And so with this sofa, notice how what I can do is I can drag a different material on here really quickly and the material looks really good, right? It's already set up as a part of this add-on. So I don't have to go through and mess around with a bunch of settings or anything like that. These are just ready to go and they're lightweight because they're PBR materials as opposed to the other materials. And so you can come in here and you can adjust things like the contrast of the roughness map. Notice how when I do that, um, this is going to basically adjust how shiny this object is. So you can come in here and you can adjust just all of these materials. So what I like about this is it's just set up and ready to go. There's not a whole lot of like messing around with things that I have to do. Um, you literally just pick the things that you want, you drop them in here and you're good to go. Um, so massive time saver, um, at least in my opinion, with this tool, which is why I like it. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. There's a lot of great tools for working with materials, but I really like this one. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below, though. What do you think and what tools are you using for your materials? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.